Now I think glutes are the unsung hero of the male physique. I'm not going to go on some weird subjective rant about the aesthetics of Greek statues, so don't worry, but I mean, just, just look at them. Now unfortunately for us brothers, we're at a slight disadvantage to our female counterparts because hormonal differences cause different fat distribution patterns. Males typically store more fat around the torso and midsection, whereas females store more around the hips, thighs and ass. Now this means it is quite possible, actually quite common, for untrained sedentary males to end up with a bit of fat around the stomachs and very little muscle development in the glutes, resulting in the illusion of having no ass, right? It's a deadly combo. However, there is a lot of good news. First, glutes have a very high potential for growth. Second, the exercises that best target them usually train other muscles too, so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck when you do them. And third, you actually don't have to lurk around the abductor machine like a complete predator. So there are three glute muscles, but I'm just gonna talk about them collectively because I don't really want my YouTube videos to feel like homework, so we're gonna skip the majority of the anatomy lesson. All you really need to be concerned with when it comes to training any muscle really is the action or actions it's responsible for. The glutes are responsible for hip extension, hip abduction, and external rotation. Now, external rotation isn't really something you're gonna do against resistance. It might be something you wanna work on from a mobility perspective, but we're not making our glutes significantly bigger by doing this. Hip abduction lends itself to resistance training a little bit better because we have exercises like the abductor machine or cable abductor raises. But again, the muscles primarily responsible for hip abduction are the smaller glute muscles, which therefore have less potential for hypertrophy. It makes sense when you think about real life. When do you ever actually do anything remotely similar to that movement against resistance? Never. So yes, I could recommend hip abduction exercises to target the glute medius and minimus so that you're technically targeting each specific muscle. But in reality, in practice, I think 99% of people need not bother. If you're a pro bodybuilder or your career is otherwise inextricably linked to having maximum ass size and you actually have spare time in your training schedule, then by all means do it. But for everyone else, let's just focus on what's gonna make the most difference hip extension. You usually see this demonstrated with a straight leg, but when it comes to exercising, we mostly do this action with a bent leg. And that's because A, it increases our mobility by reducing hamstring tension, and B, we can generate much more force that way because we're not putting the weight right at the end of a very long lever. It's like a fly versus a press. So what options have we got for hip extension? Well, quite a lot. Probably the most common that your everyday gym goer does is the leg press. It's a good exercise, perform it in the hypertrophy rep range and progressively overload and your glutes will grow. But let's look at the contracted position. You're actually nowhere near full hip extension here. Now compare that to something like a hack squat. That still allows you to get as deep as you like so your knees are almost touching your chest, but this time you can extend much further I'd say you can freely interchange the hack squat machine with a Smith machine hack or a barbell back squat. And all of those are likely far superior to a traditional leg press when it comes to glute development. There's a tangent that we're gonna avoid here about the relationship between the weight we use and the range of motion we use. One of the benefits of exercises with a shorter range of motion is that they often allow for a heavier load, but it's not quite as simple as just assuming that these two factors cancel each other out equally, because there's something called regional hypertrophy, which becomes a factor and it's just probably beyond the scope of this video. So let's go back to our hack squats because there is a way we can make these even better. One of the drawbacks of the squat or hack squat is that it's so much harder at the bottom than it is at the top. When people fail on a squat, they usually bounce off the very bottom of the rep thanks to some elasticity, and then they hit a sticking point shortly after. This means that if you do use a weight that's light enough to allow you to get past this most difficult point, you're usually not challenged very much for the rest of the rep. We can improve this by using accommodating resistance. So for a squat, you could use chains as you pick more off the floor, it gets heavier. Or for the Smith machine or hack squat, you can use bands. These serve to increase resistance as you get closer to lockout, or as you get stronger, it gets harder. And that means that your glutes will be challenged throughout the entire range of motion. 
So for all of the above reasons, I'm gonna put the barbell squat, the hack squat, and the Smith Machine hack squat as grade A tier one glute builders. You can't go wrong, and I don't really think you can improve on these at all. However, you do have some unilateral options that are just as good. Mechanically, a Bulgarian split squat is very similar to a hack squat because you can get a similar depth and you can reach a similar level of contraction at the top of the rep. Now, I personally prefer these because A, they make it easier to avoid technique pitfalls like posterior pelvic tilt and lumbar flexion, sometimes known as butt wink. B, they require less load, which means less spinal compression. And C, they're probably better for a more even development as you can't depend on a stronger side. One thing commonly talked about is how foot placement can shift the emphasis of this exercise between quads and glutes. Now whilst that's true to some extent, the real question is, to what extent? Although a larger stride might work your glutes more, it also reduces your range of motion. And ultimately, I can't say if the benefit of a larger stride is worthwhile. So I'd advise just to not worry about it and just choose a comfortable foot placement that you feel strongest and most stable using. Now another great unilateral lunge type movement is the Smith Machine Reverse Lunge. Again, that's very similar, so I'll just give it a passing mention. I would say Smith Machine beats free bar here because trying to balance free weights when you're predominantly on one foot might detract from the exercise. So there are really just two more exercises that we should mention that can go into the category of elite glute builder exercises. First, Romanian deadlifts and back extension variations. I'm putting these into the same bracket because they're very close to the same movement. This time, the hamstrings can assist with the hip extension because your legs are straight and fixed. With leg pressing movements, your hamstring lengthens as you flex the knee, reducing its action as a synergist. I mention this because many people will include a hip hinge movement like RDLs along with a leg curl as part of their hamstring work. So in all likelihood, through the combination of doing some squats or lunges for quads and a hip hinge for hamstrings, you're getting enough glute work by default. And the truth is, if you choose a good squat or lunge movement like one of the ones I mentioned, and you perform that regularly in your program along with some RDLs or back extension variations, most people can stop there and their glutes will take care of themselves. My goal here is not to flesh out a topic and give everyone eight exercises to do just for the sake of a video. I want you to ideally get the results you want with minimum wasted energy. Now that being said, for those that do want to specifically target their glutes or focus on them a bit more, we should mention hip thrusts. These definitely put less emphasis on your other leg muscles. So whilst they're not an isolation exercise, they definitely isolate glutes better than those. Your hamstrings are working, but nobody does hip thrusts specifically to develop their hamstrings, like they would squat to develop their quads or do RDLs as a hamstring exercise. If you're doing hip thrusts, it's for, you know, da ass. Now most often, people just stick to a barbell, which is fine, it's great, but it's not the only option. Many leg extension machines can be repurposed to do hip thrusts on, so if you're a beginner, this is much more comfy, allows for a lower starting weight, and it's also less hassle than adding plates to each side of a barbell. The king of hip thrusts though, has to be a good machine. Firstly, the comfort of not resting a barbell directly on your ovaries is always a bonus. Wait. Secondly, they often allow you to go deeper than a barbell because you don't have the plates hitting the floor and cutting off your range of motion. These machines aren't too common, but definitely worth a go if your gym has one. Now, I mentioned range of motion because when you look at the range of hip extension going on, what you get from a good deep hip thrust is actually what you miss on a leg press. So if you do have leg press machine as your main leg press movement, it might be an idea to complement that with some hip thrusts for max glute development. Finally, but just as, or if not more important, there's a few things that you just should never bother wasting your time on. Firstly, these kickback machines, really they're just the same as a hack squat, except in a way more awkward position and with far less range of motion. Similarly, cable kickbacks, they're just pretty useless for generating any kind of force. I mean, it's fine if you just want to squeeze that booty in the gym, but Honestly, you're just not getting anywhere. Uh, these weird donkey kick things that people do on the Smith Machine, again, it's just an absolute circus of an exercise. 
cable abductor razors. If you really want to train your abductors, which you, you know, completely entitled to do, it's fine. Then just use the machine. It's just far better. Uh, and finally, never ever like sit sideways on a leg press and do those single leg, like kung fu looking things. You know what I mean? Like as if you're Neo or something. Because you're not. I mean, they're not dangerous, like physically anyway. It's harmful to your reputation for sure. But just don't do them. They're just sh shit and weird. Generally shit and weird. All right, that's all I got. I hope you found that uh, useful in some way. I hope that improved your life. However, however minorly. Jordy Lenny is my hero.